Hello, welcome to my series about Chopin mazurkas. Today we continue our journey through Opus 41. The mazurka in B major, Opus 41, number 2. Mm. Uh, here comes a little trouble with the, uh, the numbers, in this opus in general. Um, I found out uh, quite a lot of YouTube recordings by, by very famous uh, great pianists, uh, for example Horowitz, even Horowitz. Um, when I was looking for recording of this mazurka, opus 41, number 2, uh, of course you write on YouTube Mazurka 41 2. Okay, and then there it comes. You can try yourself, you will see that. Suddenly you come, you have the, for example, Horowitz. I open, oh, how, I, I wonder how he played this Mazurka. I want to see. I open that, and then to my amazement and sadness, I would say, he plays Mazurka. <laughs> Mazurka E minor, and what is worse even, that it says that the Mazurka B major, opus 41, number 2. And this is not the only example, there are quite many uh, errors like this and mistakes. Why is so? Uh, I explained to you. Because um, this opus of Mazurka's 41 was published in three different countries by three different people uh, in France and in Britain and in Germany and what happened is that in France and Britain maz it, mazurka number one is E minor number two is B major and so on uh, whereas in Germany the last mazurka in this opus the C sharp minor was published as number one. And here comes this um, um, the confusion. Because in some recordings, in some editions, this is number one, in some this is number four. Uh, so if it was number one, then E minor is number two. And uh, that's why we have these mistakes. And I think we should be very, very careful um, by writing that. So that's why I wanted just to point out uh, and explain this problem. Now, this Mazurka B major. Let's just listen to it a bit. It has a very simple structure, A, B, A, but with some changes. Um, it starts from a kind of... Um, uh, a kind of uh, preparation for the, tr for the real Mazurka. Four times repeated note. I was I was talking about it um, when I when I said that this is the code which we have in all the mazurkas in Opus 41. Uh, repeated one no, one repeated note. Uh, Chopin himself said that it is like a choir of well, it's a strange saying, but that's what he said: a choir of guitars at least in Polish. I have the book, this is a fantastic book, Chopin in the Eyes of His Students, written by Jean-Jacques Eigeldinger. And he exactly quote, he quote uh, Wilhelm von Lenz, uh, the student of Chopin. And uh, Wilhelm von Lenz says about this mazurka. Chopin said that the opening of this mazurka is like a choir of guitars and it's and that it's especially difficult in this mazurka to um, to show the movement of dancing groups of people which are constantly changing their direction of dance this is extremely important because when we listen to part a we immediately can picture groups of people dancing and changing the directions If you can catch it but the melody is constantly changing the directions we go down then we go up then down then up and 
then we go again a very fast changing direction down and up and i think it's very important for the pianist to emphasize this how can we do it well we can do it by changing the tempo but it's not really a good idea because it's a dance so you cannot dance when you do the rubato so we can also change it by the dynamic or by making some kind of accents or by simply grouping how to group this well of course it's up to the pianist i can only say about my subjective idea which for me is then we start and then again and then again and again right so when i practice that i do this separation Later, I can also try to do some accents on every first note of the new group. Once again. Now I'm practicing. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm exaggerating this. Of course, it cannot play like this. But when you get it in your head, then later it is very natural. Another thing that Chopin said about this beginning is that this choir of guitars, or let, well, let's say group of guitars, sounds better in English, a group of guitars, it should be played faster than the, the real mazurka. So this must be faster. And with the accelerando. to the part B uh, which I'm going to talk about soon but what happens here well I, I'm sure for you now it sounds a little bit weird right a little bit strange changing tempo all the times well nobody plays like this I agree nobody plays like this uh, but it sounds a little strange um, you have to use a lot of your imagination and I will of course consider when I'm going to record a CD so I will see but it's very tempting for me to play it like this First of all, because nobody does, and second of all, because Chopin wrote to, and he was teaching like that. So that means it's original. That means uh, Chopin was himself changing the tempo. So why, sh why can't I do it, right? Um, but of course, it has to be very clear, and the idea must be very understandable for the listener. That's very important. Uh, now, another fascinating thing in this part A is this modulation, so that it's constantly changing. Let's, let's see how, what we have here uh, in this mazurka. This is um, very similar to another piece of Chopin. I'm sure if you are a pianist, you know immediately what I'm talking about. The right hand and right left they are playing exactly the same notes and this mazurka was written in Nohain in the in France where Chopin was uh, having a kind of well vacation let's say in the French countryside together with Jostin and he well he felt very well and he really composed a lot that time this was this was his probably best time and among all the other pieces and all those mazurkas opus 41 he also composed his second piano sonata and of course now you know what i'm talking about the finale from the his piano sonata <laughs> this finale has exactly the same kind of technique and composi compositional uh, technique like here so it's absolutely sure that Chopin was kind of well inspired by his idea uh, that he wrote in this sonata but here it stops and 
then left hand left hand ha is dancing but what I want to say is now I want to share with you uh, what I picture in my imagination when I play this mazurka uh, because it's very funny and it works for me extremely well I picture like a, a group of dancing people of course but um, this is for me like a scene from the cabaret like from cabaret so something very very funny uh, we can imagine we are sitting in the cabaret and we are uh, we are watching uh, a group of folk dancers who are making fun what what I mean a lot of jokes and now the, it starts from the guitars and then they are dancing by changing the direction of the time and again guitars and now again there but here this first modulation what happens here suddenly the melody is a different key the first time it was second time of course if you are a musician you you hear it immediately but if you are not a musician i probably for you it's something like oh something is here out of tune it doesn't it was it is it's it's a uh, one half half tone uh, down so and what's more funny that this this melody is repeated so it seems like chopin liked the idea so he repeats it and then he comes back to the the same key that he was before so for me in my scene it is like in this group of dancing people suddenly a couple dancing couple uh, by mistake got out of this group and and end up somewhere very far away from the circle of dancing people let's imagine there is a circle of dancing people then the pair goes up and of course all the audience uh, they are, are are laughing because of course they made it very spectacular that this is going out and they are dancing as if nothing happened but they they went out so at the end of this group suddenly maybe the director of this cabaret saw it so he pointed them out and another couple went out and kicked them back to the the circle uh, and this this pushing them or kicking them back to 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 the circle is the the last bar which is the same as the, at the beginning and it doesn't really suit here but it sounds fantastically just listen uh, i played the whole thing and now they went out and now they're pushed back and guitars same and then this note here is different it seems like a pianist made a mistake and by accident played the white key instead of black uh, that's how it always was it was three times already and suddenly we have so again the same couple made a mistake and just uh, maybe fall down on the floor and then stand up and start to dance but somewhere completely in a, in a different area of the scene and again the audience is laughing and they keep going so and here comes part b all this is so funny and i think it's very important for the performer to show it uh to the listener S somehow by changing changing maybe the dynamic i was thinking of making here um, in the second time a little bit louder and now a little softer sometimes pianists play it slower here they make a kind of rubato but 
everything is possible. But for me, rubato in dancing, uh, this doesn't work. It's not simple enough. It must be simple anyway. So. I think maybe it's a good idea to play this note very short in the, with an accent so that to show that it's not by mistake and then we are in a different key again the same melody but one tone half tone down and this is part b let's listen to part b now to A again. Well, this is pianistically extremely difficult, uh, very demanding, we, we need to play four notes very fast uh, using our wrist, right? <laughs> Especially here in the second part time when we have the melody in the middle voice and we still have octaves to play. problem is that usually when we play it very fast we get tensed and especially in the elbow so it's very important to relax uh, and try to play it from the wrist but definitely as a preparation exercise I strongly recommend the pianist to just uh, practice on on the leg many weeks maybe even, until we can do it very fast and then we can just... It is difficult, but of course uh, one can slow down a bit this part B so that it's played with, with control. But what is this? Well, uh, pro uh, Polish musicologist, very famous, Mieczysław Tomaszewski, is saying that this is not really Polish, he says. It's probably from Mallorca, Spanish or something like this. Probably because he, I don't understand why he says, I have a deep respect for this man, but I don't understand why he says that. Um, because I, knowing all the Chopin mazurkas, I can easily find the same exactly motif written by, well, 20 years old Chopin in Opus 7. When we take Mazurka, Opus 7, number 2. In the middle part of this Mazurka, just listen what we have here. Now. Ta -ta -ta -tam. Exactly the same thing, right? So I'm really surprised uh, and I cannot understand um, why Professor Mieczysław Tomaszewski uh, couldn't find here the Polish rhythm. It's a very typical Polish, of course, uh, triolas. This is a kind of imitation maybe of the of some drums. Chopin used it also in Polonaise A major. You know where. Now here. Yum! Ta -da -da -dum, ta -da -da -dum. The same thing here we have. I think to make it Polish it's very important to emphasize and play three a little bit later. Especially here. And, and uh, mind, mind you that here we also have modulation and it's exactly the same like before, three times in three different keys. First time... Then 
different key. And different key. And the end, and then part A. And now the question. If you don't know this mazurka, what's the difference between A and this style what we have here? Well, the difference is obvious uh, if you listen carefully. Um, we don't have the guitars. In the second time, guitar guitar players fall asleep. Uh, so that's a continuation of the cabaret. Well, you know, the musicians, when they cannot play, they, they are so tired, they just fall asleep during this. And then, so then they are dancing, but without guitars. finish their presentation so they just by da dancing 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 they f they go away and they disappear uh, uh, behind the scenes right and then it ends but suddenly guitar players woke up they woke up oh we have to play so at the end they have to play so they start to play it is so funny of course when you use this imagination but anyway it's still genius and funny when you listen to it for the first time for example carefully and then in the second in the in the a b uh, sorry a1 uh, part you are missing something you miss these guitars they don't they are not coming so first time they don't come second time no Third time, no. Fourth time, when everything disappears, suddenly at the end they come. And this makes this mazurka a really masterpiece. So I hope you enjoyed uh, this episode. Um, and maybe I try to play it for you as a whole thing.